My name is Hodge from GamingSex.com. In about late 2009, early 2010, this guy's video started circulating called Booster Justice, where he would go into a Modern Warfare 2 lobby, find boosters, and issue justice, as the title would suggest. They were some of the most entertaining videos I was seeing at the time, and they didn't feature any personality whatsoever. It was just music, incredible kills, and Duke Nukem sound bites, and that was it. So I reached out to Sandy Ravage, who had been making those videos. I asked him if I could upload one of them to my channel. My channel was kind of blowing up at the time, and I wanted to use that to help other people who, uh, who I, whose stuff I liked. To this day, Sandy Ravage remains one of my most favorite people to watch play video games, simply by virtue of the fact that he is incredible at almost every video game he plays. But when I started to think about it, I realized I don't know anything about this guy, so I figured what better person to come on uh, or to bring on to uh, an episode of Quality Time with Hutch and sit down and get to know him a little bit. So that's what I did. Sit back, relax, enjoy today's video. Um. Okay. Well, if you if you don't mind, I just I usually just jump right into these things. I don't do much of a introduction or anything like that. Do you play anything or are you just? just no, well, no. Talk? I usually just put like gameplay on in the background. So. Okay. Um. Like, I'll probably put like H1Z1 for this one. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. Better than MW2. <laughs> Fuck that. We can talk about that game. Fuck that game. <clears throat> I love MW2. All right, <laughs> All right, let's talk about that. All right, hold on. <clears throat> All right, what's up, you guys? My name is Hutch. I'm a gaming sex icon, and I'm sitting here with another gaming sex icon, an incredibly attractive man by the name of Sandy Ravage. I've met <laughs> you in none person, of, so none I can... None of that is true. I, I, you are a pretty man. I've met you. You're startlingly <laughs> handsome. Quite a few years ago. We were just talking about um, Modern Warfare 2 before this started. I don't know if you saw my list. I post I posted a list on Twitter that was quite controversial, I might say, where I listed all my um, favorite CODs in order, and I had Modern Warfare 2 dead last. That is absurd, and you know it. MW2 is groundbreaking. It's a fantastic game with a huge amount of flaws, for sure. Can you just explain to me, though, like, it, every lobby that I got in, there was someone doing one man army noob tube or there was someone doing whatever glitch was was I'm gonna, present I'm at the time. Go ahead and blame the YouTube heyday for that for spreading that disease of one man army. Oh, for sure. That's that yeah. Was bad. But that wasn't me. I didn't do it. But then well, like uh, once no. once it no, come on. I mean I, I know it wasn't. <laughs> I guess uh Machinima Respawn did do the uh they did actually they did post a bunch of those videos. So these were the biggest videos for about six weeks. Everyone wanted to get a nuke in like eight seconds. Man, you don't even... I'm not counting G-Unit, one, two, three. We're not (laughs) counting that. (laughs) You don't even know how hard I fought behind the scenes to get those videos taken down, and it just wasn't going to happen. I was just just so powerless to stop it. (laughs) I I didn't like it, but but the other aspects of MW2 were just great, though. Shotgun secondaries? Okay, I didn't say that was great, but I love the shotgun. <laughs> dual no, blocks, they, dual I don't blocks, and secondaries. About that, I think the shotgun should have been primary, but I'm talking more in line like everyone thinks of Call of Duty now with all these kill streaks, like ten kill streaks. MW2 brought all these ideas in. Sure, I guess. Okay, and, uh, so I guess my I guess the reason why I put it dead last is not necessarily because of how the game played, but because of how sore of a taste it was left in my mouth because of that. Because that game made them so much money. At the time, it was the biggest entertainment launch of all time. Oh, it yeah. made more money than any movie or any album or any any kind of, uh, any kind of other um, form of media made in a single day. It crushed those records. So that studio and the, and the publisher, I should say the publisher, Activision, they were just like drowning in cash. And then the studio gets goes through all that turmoil with Zampella and West leaving, mm-hmm. um, and then like which spawned a mass exodus where I think like it was like a huge number of their core development team left. So, th- be, th- but that didn't matter to me. Like they had time to drop a DLC, but they didn't have time to fix the fucking game. And and they were just such simple fixes. So after See, a while, I just stopped. I viewed it, it as like the devs obviously would want their game you know, to fix their own game. They see the flaws, but you would think there's a higher up that was not allowing it, you know? Like, because if that game was made that much better, the next Call of Duty is not going to sell as much, in my opinion. No, you think it was that? I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I just, I just chalked it up to laziness, to be honest. 
I, well, like, it's there not was like definitely they did... turmoil that came out the year later that when everyone left. And, it was, it was like to two. Respawn. It was like two months later. It, was, it happened yeah. like right away. And it was like no. This... But I assume it was going on the whole time after release. Sure. Yeah. And then and then it really hit the news. Well, but, uh... I guess for people that are watching this on the off chance that they don't know who you are, you you're uh, you were hands down my favorite COD <laughs> player to watch back then. Oh, thank and you. you didn't ever talk like you waited quite a while before I think you put your real voice in the videos. You yeah, all, it's... You, yeah. Okay. Here, here's something funny, actually. Uh, you invited me to be on a camp hutch. Um, I, I guess did. this was 2010 and I declined. You turned me down. Like, it was a terrible, <laughs> I should never have. <laughs> Horrible career I really move. should never have declined. <laughs> no, but I was like, listen, I, I really. <laughs> I'm not comfortable really speaking. I, I'm quite a shy person. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I don't really go outside. <laughs> no, I did. But uh, I'm not I'm not big on talking. And my videos back then, uh, it was all about the music. Yeah. Was, I was just trying to showcase, uh, you know, it was weird. You actually did a thing back then. I think you were having a commentary with Wings. We were discussing camping and, uh, you know, pros and cons or whatever. And I started to see a lot of people playing such a passive, like, play style that it was annoying me greatly. Oh, it was the worst. So I just put videos out. The music kind of amped them up, made them feel quicker than they were. I just wanted people moving. And uh, I, I hopefully, you know, a lot of people told me, wow, I didn't know that was a viable play style, but it absolutely is. You run you... straight to the B flag, boom, every spawn. That's it. And you managed... Like, what was your KD overall in Modern Warfare 2? Do you remember? I, I don't know. Yeah, it was like three and a half or so. Three point five. God, man. Like, you somehow tapped into the code of that game, <laughs> and we're seeing ones and zeros. It's like me. See, that's why, like, I'm forever a fanboy of MW2. And trust me, I don't touch that game because I know how broken it is. But those early days, best gaming of my life. Most fun. How did you get into, um, how did you get into YouTubing? Like, what, what was the, what was the start for you? Well, actually, because of the early days, it's funny. Uh, New York City seems to have gotten the, the games first. That's what I think, because we had it a week before the game came out. I was in grad school, and my friend uh, texts me. He's like, they're selling MW2. Where do they usually come out, like November 9th or so? Um, Yeah, somewhere around that time. But this, this you're you're like right, the... though, because they were there. I don't know if it was just the, the East Coast, but there were a lot of people that had MW2 like a it week was... or two before. They were streaming on Justin TV. Yeah. Yeah. It was like November 1st. He's texting me. I'm like, okay. I ran out of the classroom and uh, I went, I picked it up. And, you know, uh, only a few weeks before that, the Hapag came out. Remember that? Oh, yeah. HD PVR. Yeah. And I was uploading Call, Call of Duty 4 videos just for fun, for my own, you know, making little montages. My editing, by the way, has not gotten any better. It's just as bad as my first video. <laughs> it's just awful. <laughs> But uh, do you still use like you know, Windows Movie Maker? Oh, uh... uh, it's Sony Vegas, but it's trash. It's, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. so bad at it. But um, basically, I just started playing and uploading. Well, I was recording, and I was like, "All right, let's show this stuff." Like the chopper gunner, the AC-130 is the coolest things ever in Call of Duty. But but you had uh, uh you had been capturing during COD Four, is that what you said? I was yeah, I was uploading some COD Four for a bit. Not how did you, you know, get that? I'm saying, how did you get that original idea? Were there oh. some YouTubers that you were watching uh, back then? No, there actually weren't. And from what I know, there weren't many anyway. There was like Blame Truth, XCal. I believe you were probably doing your thing back then. Weren't many at the time. Oh, obviously, Grizz. He's like the inspiration for half the YouTubers out there. Oh, yeah. But you, um, Yeah, him and no, you I were just... a lot alike in that regard. Because you were both doing, you were both playing super aggressive and making the game look so fucking cool. And that it, made that's, it, that was yeah. really the goal is, is to make fun videos. I, I had no information to give, you know, like I'm not a commentator at all. So I just noticed like I was getting these matches that seemed a little crazy at the time, like, you know, like really lopsided and they looked really fun to watch again from my own viewing. And that's kind of how the YouTube thing started. You know, so, I would just put them up and, and just watch them. So then you got, you got contacted by Machinima. You got invited to their, to their, um, I don't know what they called it back then. Director's program? That's what it was. It Directing. was like, yeah, the super early one. And uh, like C Nanners was part of it and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is pretty serious. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll accept. 
But um, and what were you doing for work at the time? Were you were were you a student or work, what? I was deliver. Well, I was a student. I was doing masters computer science. And I was delivering Chinese food. What do you mean masters? You have a masters? Uh, yeah, computer science. Shut the fuck up! I didn't know that. When did when when did that happen? Yeah, it does. No, that was my. Okay, I don't know if you remember, but I used to take these insanely long breaks from YouTube, like six months at a time. I wouldn't yeah. upload a single video. I remember. It was a school. It was oh. all because of school. Jesus. Although, wow. didn't really do much for my uh, <laughs> gaming career, but I, I don't look upon it as a negative at all. Do you, you, know, you still do you, do you still use do you still use that d degree in any way these days? Absolutely not. No, I, <laughs> I've never used it. <laughs> uh, wow, that's. But, uh, you know, uh, again, I would never look upon it as a negative. No, no, a master's, man. Come on, that's crazy. But when you think about it in your head, I, you know, I should have been pumping out videos every day. It would have been a great thing, but it just didn't seem like no one saw what was coming back then. Yeah, hindsight's always twenty twenty, and especially especially in this in this. I mean, like. You'd have to have been clairvoyant or some kind of genius to see the profitability of YouTubing coming back then. You know, yeah. like I, I think I had a feeling that there was something there because I was like, you know, if you can get like 10,000 people to watch you or 20,000 people to watch you, like there's got to be some value there. And beyond that, I didn't have any kind of like business savvy or anything like that. Yeah. So it was just, it was like this real base hunch that something was coming, but you know, as See, as and, for no god oh i was saying and for me in particular my videos revolved completely around music and specifically metallica <laughs> yeah. and everything in my videos was against <laughs> the copyright you know like everything against I, I couldn't get paid for my videos so i was really like i was i didn't think youtube was a profit making thing for me i thought it was a lot of fun though yeah but Dude, I couldn't see myself uploading a video without Metallica playing or Megadeth or whatever. Yeah, it was it was really like really a part of your brand, you know. That like was you, it. You, that... go, you go to a video of yours expecting to see like incredible gameplay and then like master of puppets in the background. Yeah, like though. if you watch my video without music, incredibly boring. Like me, if I'm commentating over it. You don't want to do that. You just want to put the music on and, and listen. So like I, I had so many the early days, I got like 70 million views from these videos, mainly because I got them up early. Yeah. And none of them were monetizable due to the music and all that. Oh, so. that's depressing. <laughs> it's funny. It, <laughs> again, I wouldn't have met, you know, all the people I still talk to online if it weren't for those videos and a Metallica and all that. So then um, Machinima hit you up and like, how did you, I don't even remember, did you get did like local bands or like indie bands reach out to you and offered for you to be able to use their music or how did you get around the all right there's actually this awesome gentleman named charlie para del rigo you may have heard of him he does a lot of video game music covers and he's awesome i found his channel and i was like can i start using some of your songs and uh, he's like yeah perfect so i started putting him over a lot of songs he made my theme song and all that and he he's went on he's in some he's touring the world right now he's crazy yeah and uh i have a guy d1 of aqua vibe he actually lives uh, oh yeah i know who he that lived guy really close he lived about five blocks from me and he made a ton of songs so i started using those into my videos and you know they're, they're great music but people always want metallica they want like the same song on every video so it's kind of a tough situation but it was again it was so much fun back then and then you ended up, um, you ended up doing sort of. I don't think you did full commentaries, but you would do like little quick I did commentary intros. Seconds. Yeah, and, <laughs> twenty-two seconds or so. <laughs> but you had this like kind of air of mystery about you back then. So uh -huh. in a way, I think that was even more compelling just to do like a little twenty-second thing. It's kind of kind of well, like Hollywood Angels with his mask, you know. Once like that, that became like a part of his sort of like. Not brand, well, see, but like sort of character, you know, and it worked. I didn't help myself because the first video I uploaded to Machinima was actually with a female in it. And uh and at that oh, time that's no one ever right. heard me. Yeah. yeah. Who did you get to what that's was my girlfriend? That? <laughs> oh, my that's God. yeah, she uh she I had her you know, she half the things in there was I wrote it down and tell her told her to say it. Like I told her to just be a huge jerk. That was the point. I was just trying to <laughs> troll people. <laughs> I think it worked and, too. To this day, people come into my Twitch 
like, I thought you were a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it worked. Your girlfriend's not bad at video games either. She's uh, she's better than me, basically. Come on. Almost. Come on. No, she's quite good. She's very good. No, she's uh, no, yeah, no actors. joke. She's very, very good. I've watched her. She's I've watched good. you guys do dual streams of. Uh, I remember watching you guys play Titanfall. Titanfall. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was a fun game. Great yeah, game. she was she was incredible at that game. She's a natural gamer. It's crazy. How did you guys meet? <laughs> it's funny you would mention that. Okay, do you remember back in the day I made Booster Justice? Oh yeah, I put, I put, yeah. Okay. You, I asked you to post one of them yeah. on the channel. You you sent me a message. I was like, oh man, Hutch just sent me a message. You know, I was fanboying, <laughs> and you asked to uh, to upload it. I was like, yeah, absolutely. You kidding me? You put it up. She watched that video of Booster Justice on your channel, <laughs> and actually, and ended up in my live stream because I was doing Justin TV back then. And uh, yeah, I guess we just met there through through you, kind of. So, so did she weird. have like her profile picture as like her picture or something? Like, and then you just notice this? No, like I think just like I, my whole stream re revolves around just talking to the chat, basically. And yeah, I just get to know a bunch of people, and uh, I guess you know a few years later or whatever. Yeah, so, this is a long time ago. So. Yeah, but like I'm saying, like, how did you end up? Like so, at what point did you see a picture of her and go, "Holy crap, this girl's beautiful"? I gotta. I didn't see think I... she was a female for a couple months there, a couple <laughs> years probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it was a couple months later. I think she had like a YouTube profile or something. And you were like, "Man, I gotta gotta take this girl out." Yeah. Is she is she like she, lo she lived in the same area as you? <laughs> no, not at all. Lived in the same area as you, basically, Northern California, right? Uh, or wait, you, or whatever. Wow, yeah. I mean, that's where I was yeah. from originally, but yeah. Uh, so then, all right. And so she, she moved, she moved over there. Yeah. She came out here and you guys have been together for a while, huh? It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. How many years? That's probably uh, yeah. like what? Eight years, seven years. Probably seven, six range. Like, like I said, you know, as we chatted and stuff on, on the live stream for a while, you know, she didn't just fly out here yeah. instantly. That'd be kind of weird. So then, yeah, it's it's a, it's a good transition though, because you you ended up switching to um, switching your focus and your priority on streaming. So yeah, like from day one, I made my Twitch channel and my YouTube channel basically within three weeks of each other, and uh, I always wanted to stream because, you know, I'm not. Everyone always accused me of like a cherry picker. Remember that back then? Everyone, oh, you're just cherry picking your videos, and like I I like to just play, and you know, I lose. I I'm trying to show people that you know you lose a lot of games. You don't just win every game. Sure. So I would stream it and, you know, like no one was really streaming back then. Not many. No. So it was crazy. Yeah, real small and crowd. All, all the Booster Justice videos, that was all streamed live. And that, you know, when I think about it, the most fun nights I've ever had playing a game. Yeah, you and used to, uh, I remember you would add that disclaimer at the front of the video that said all of these are taken from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was one night I'd play for like six hours and the video would be made from that night and it was kind of like a fun inside thing for the people who were in stream because they got to see it live oh and, man uh, people don't realize but people don't realize now these people that maybe got into cod like modern warfare 3 or ghost mm -hmm. or something like that they don't realize just how bad of a problem boosting was back then it was so bad yeah it was the worst and so yeah, like so that I, that was so brilliant to be making those videos because it gave all of us this cathartic release of uh of watching you just destroy these assholes that were ruining the game that we loved i i did not think that video was gonna blow up like when i watch it now it's it's really awfully edited you know there's no real pacing to it but i didn't think it was gonna become that i just wanted to, i was free for all is my game mode that's what all i used to play yeah and more people to I, kill they were just they were ruining it that's all they were doing and free for all was boosting, so I got so annoyed. And I got so much footage of it. I was like, "All right, just throw up a video of it," and that was that. Yeah, boosters, I, I would, I would try sucked. to, I would try to emulate you sometimes, and I'd put up my own little version of it, and it would just <laughs> like, like little two pieces here and there. And like, <laughs> just, it was just there was no way I could keep up with the pace that you were setting. So, well, see, the the thing with the boosters is they were so awful. I used to I used to just roll on up to him and just throw a C4 right at them and just kind of stand there like whoever's boosting is generally the worst player in the game and I felt we had to show them on the internet had to I might have boosted to sit rep pro this guy 
I might have done that. Unbelievable. But I nah. never but it never got to a point where I was like I, w- I would never win the game because of boosting or whatever. I would just go off yeah. my corner with my little buddy. I think I would do it with viewers to be honest. I'm not sure. I probably I shouldn't can't believe this. Look, I was not boosting uh like what 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 were people boosting back then? Like what was the big nukes. things? It was all nukes. All right, it started in, in Call of Duty 4. Headshots, you want to do a headshot match? Oh, 1v1 because okay. yeah, they wanted yeah. the gold. They want gold AK or whatever it was back then. And uh, and then it moved on to MW2 once people realized TAC insert could be used in a free-for-all. It yeah. just took over. It was like it was like a four-week period where it was nonstop. Yeah, it was the worst, and, man. Uh, and then people started to do... Yeah, you know, I'm sure they were doing it while I was doing it. I just put a video up. But half the free-for-alls I would join is just people going after these guys. So it kind of, it kind of, they kind of just went away yeah. quickly. So how do you, but they feel, were going for nukes. How do you feel about, um, about COD these days? Okay. I have the same, like call of duty. When it comes out, I always have high hopes. People always ask, are you going to play it? Are you going to play it? I always want to play call of duty, but I'm not going to stick with the game if I don't like it, you know, there's so many games coming out every day. There's a new game and call of duty has, you know, it's somewhat let me down over, over the years. I thought black ops three was fantastic though. Bill, like a black ops three was great. Yeah. I, I loved it. What loved would you, it. what game would you say? Um, what game would you say came out where you thought to yourself like, uh Oh, I don't like the direction that's taken here. Was it black ops MW- one? Or was it <clears throat> modern warfare three? MW three. MW three all yeah, day, me, every day. Me too, man. I, I did not game. like it. And I felt after, you know, there was COD 4 and then MW2, these games were going nuts. You know, they were, they were just infinitely getting better. Well, all right, COD 4 is a better game. I'll say that any day than MW2 was. But I thought MW2 was more fun. Yeah, fundamentally, then, if you're talking about, like, competitive, then maybe, you know, it's COD hard. COD 4 to, is a better game. Yeah, it's hard to beat it. But then MW3 came out, and I, I just felt like it was the worst. I didn't like it at all. They had that game had one redeeming factor, and that was the specialist strike package, which was a that lot was cool. of fun. That was a lot that of fun. That was definitely cool. Specialist strikers running, they're killing everyone. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, the Moab was good too, because you would blow everybody up. It would kind of change the tone of the map, but it wouldn't end the game. <clears throat> so I thought that that was like they had like literally two like moves in the right direction. And then it everyth- was cool. But I'll tell you what, the whole thing of a whole team. Uh, spawning ballistic vests for one guy that that was that was awful yeah it was kind of like juggernaut light like it was had, so bad they had taken out juggernaut in modern warfare 2 which was great but then they like <clears throat> kind of put a bit then they had like painkiller because like they just kept on always messing with health like Infi- was, was infinity bad. ward death has always streaks. done that death streaks were a terrible terrible idea oh this death streaks were terrible yeah and the maps were terrible in modern warfare 3 too they were all like drab and oh mw3 was so uh gray yeah it was just yeah every map was bad i didn't like it but uh you know i i a lot of people loved it so i don't know i guess i missed out and then since then well black ops 2 i thought was a pretty good game black ops 2 was all right it wasn't my favorite but it was all right. You know, I recognize it, it just, it was, I don't know what it is. I can't even like put my finger on it. It was just, there's something about that game that I couldn't really do that well. Like my KD wasn't that great, you know? And in every yeah. other black ops game, my KD was like pretty decent, you know, like over two and it wasn't hard for me to get high streaks, but for whatever reason, that game just was tough for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I played that game and it was just like, I, I kind of lost like I stopped making music montages really because I don't know the games didn't have the same feel anymore, and uh, I I just enjoyed it. I played and did a bunch of commentaries and stuff with that. Sark was in a and bunch of those yeah, videos. The Cream right? Team, he's crazy. Yeah, we did a few. <laughs> you there was another there was a Cream Team and then you guys had your own name for for <clears throat> you Fick and Sark. I can't remember what it was. The tag Team. The Tag Team. Because all we did was play Kill Confirm, which I gotta mention that was MW3. I forgot. Best yeah. thing they introduced. Yeah, yeah that's so true. I liked it. Which that, they t- and they took the that they took that from I think Crisis or Crisis Two, like that. I, I never had a computer that could run those freaking games. Those were crazy. Oh, it was a con- Crisis Two was a console game too. I actually played really? the shit out of it. Yeah, I loved it. it. But their their default team deathmatch game type was basically kill confirm. Like you would kill them and then this sort of like beam of light would drop into the ground and you wouldn't get credit for the kill until you picked up that. I, I love Kill Confirm. I think it's one of the best game modes to ever come out. 
Me too. Yeah. I, I thought if if the thing is, is like nobody plays it though. Like I tried playing I it know. in the new one. I tried playing it in Black Ops Three, and it's just not populated. Nobody plays it in Modern Warfare Remastered either. It works the best in a score, uh, score streak setting where getting the tags moves you up to the next score streak. Yeah, definitely. In, in remaster, it's just kills, right? You know, three, three, five, seven. Um, yeah. So or yeah, they don't, they don't, don't count. No, yeah. It does. So. I don't think it works so well in that setting. It's, it still but. pushes the at like it make get like I just didn't like camping. <clears throat> I just was never a fan of camping I in the game. Hate. I hate camping. Yeah, so, so do I. And so, like, with that game type, it was just perfect for me because, you know, if you're not – Domination can get kind of crazy, and game types like Headquarters can get real nuts too. And, but TDM was, like, a nice kind of – or uh, Kill Confirm was, like, a nice in-between between, like, TDM and mm-hmm. Dom because you could still be sort of tactical, but you did have to, like, move around if you actually wanted to score any points. I just – I think it was a great game mode. That's, that's, without a doubt, one of my favorite game modes ever. You excited for but- um, going back to World War II? You know, I'm not I'm not excited, but I'm definitely going to play the game. I feel like it's crazy when you think about it. It's been, you know, 10 years now. Call of Duty has went <laughs> in every single direction, you know, and now we're back to 10 years ago or whatever, even 12 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the reason they change all the time is because the people, you know, they're, they're like, I want something new. And no one's ever going to be satisfied. It's just impossible. No. And we've all it- played this game. we had two you know yeah but going back to world war ii and it's got obviously potential and i'm gonna play it but i can't say it's gonna be you know a great game you know um when you think about it when they committed to yearly entries which just from like a shareholder standpoint they were sort of obligated to do they were making so much money that for them not to release a game every year would have been insanely stupid uh, it would have been just been leaving, you know, billions of dollars on the table. So the whole like sort of greedy Activision, um, I don't know if you want to call it like meme that was all over YouTube comments and Twitter for a long time. I think a lot of that is just, you know, a lot of that is kids. Like, of course, the games would have been better if they would have taken yeah. like the battlefield route and, uh, you know, only released them like once every couple of years or three Look at years. Battlefield now, you know, everyone's doing it. Pumping uh, games out every year. Are, are the, is, see now is Battlefield coming out with a uh, uh, well? They didn't come out with one. Oh, they did. No, but Battlefield Battlefront, one. Yeah, that they got the... they got the different studios making the different games. Ah, uh, yeah, engine. that's true. Yeah, yeah. And before that, they were doing it with Medal of Honor. It was like the same yep. team doing doing that game, which was terrible. Can't um, fault them for making money. No, but like, but the quality but, but be- took a nosedive. Oh, of course, yeah. But you know. I think it's gotten a little bit better now with the three studios. Like Infinite Warfare wasn't my, you know, wasn't my game, but at the very least, it seemed kind of polished in maybe ways that like. See, no, this is, yeah. this is what I call Ravage luck right here. They put the shotgun in Infinite Warfare. The S Ravage. <laughs> the S Ravage. Yeah, they that, named it after you. Let's just make it clear that is the coolest thing to ever happen to me in my life. Easily. Yeah, that and happened to us it, before too. We, uh, they oh, put, in the strategy guide for MW3. Yeah, they had a. Yeah. I can't remember what the company was, but whoever did the official strategy guide, they had these preset like suggested classes, and one of them mm-hmm. was the Sandy Ravage, and it had one was the Hutch. Yeah, one was the Hutch, and the the class was terrible. The one that they My gave class me had overkill on it. All right, nothing's worse. Mine's the worst class of all time. I but don't then, remember what mine had, but mine was bad. My class was something like, I would the never bolt use. Bolt action sniper, right? No, I think it was the 50 cal and something else, but like it was, it, but there was something about like the perk setup. It just felt kind of cheesy. My perks were so, I wish they asked me. I would have happily answered. Yeah, they but, just surprised us. We just, I remember both of us were getting tweets the day that it came out. I and, couldn't uh, believe it. Yeah, that was nuts. That's obviously an honor and it's flattering and I'm, you know, happy they did it. So I'm complaining yeah, I'm, too much. I laugh about it when I think about it. It was a great awesome things to happen i never expected it to happen yeah and now the gun took that times 100 no one told me it was gonna happen yeah that's nuts and yeah it turns out it's the worst gun in any call of <laughs> that's what I it's heard. just the worst so that's a little upsetting <laughs> i have not actually gotten to play it with that's, it yeah that's unfortunate but like but what i was saying was like it was inevitable that the game was going to go to the future it was inevitable that the game was going to have double jumps in some in some mm-hmm. way you know i don't know about wall run i never saw wall running coming i gotta tell you i was like well, i'll tell you titanfall made a huge when they came out and that the fluidity the movement was so great <clears> then yeah call of duty started doing it 
Well, see now Treyarch, I think they claim that that they had already been working on wall running before Titanfall had even been previewed. But I don't know how much stock I put in that, man, cuz it, fe- <laughs> it felt like it felt like a reaction, but I don't I mean, know. All the games had wall running after it out of nowhere, so it's it, it could be. Either way, it was a natural progression. Yeah. Because like I said, people get they get bored of the same thing and they want huge change. But now we're going back. So are they going to be bored of that? I guess we'll see. Well, there was like there were like so many, um, if not wars or battles, there were so many different conflicts that took place after um, after the fall of the of the Third Reich and 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 the, and the mm-hmm. onset of the Cold War and their conflict with Russia and Indo Indo and countries in Indo China for like sixty years. So there's like a plethora of material to choose from. I just want to see them like focus on maybe something smaller. You know what I mean? Like they don't need to have the scenario where the bad guys got the big weapon that's going to blow up the world. Like that doesn't need to be the thing that drives the story every time. So like, while I'm glad that they're going back to world war two, I would like to see them explore uh, a lot of the conflicts that were in the cold war that we haven't even like touched yet in the yeah, series. Because how many world war two games have come out? It's, it's so many, you know, there's enough world war two, but they're always fun games. They are. Yeah. It was, you know, there's cool equipment, guns and all that, but, I, I could see them doing the, you know, the very standard uh, campaign where you go explore major battles in each zone or whatever. That it's been done a hundred times. I hope they don't do that. But. Yeah, you know, I I think that you know I have faith this year. Like, um, it it really just kind of depends on, you know, it seems kind of self-explanatory, but it really just depends on how they balance the guns and uh, and and the maps. Like to me, those are like the two most important things. Is like. How, how what's the gun balance and do the maps feel like uh i don't even know how, how do you describe a map that you like in call of duty like uh, i would say it's perfectly sp- symmetrical small to medium well, not looking like it yeah like a medium size you know uh not no big elevated z- i hate elevation peg glitch elevation sucks i don't like that yeah i don't like a to c type uh long lines then you get you get four guys with a sniper rifle sitting there the whole game, <laughs> while you're trying to get. The I, used to, flag, I used to love those maps you know? for the record, but yeah. Well, Bog is one of my absolute favorite maps of all time, but um, you know, it. I don't like large maps in Call of Duty. I don't think it works at all. It's been attempted numerous times now, and it, it always fails. I think it worked a little bit better in Modern Warfare 2 because you had Marathon Pro. You had like unlimited sprint. But like um, what? I guess what Wasteland. There was that like was Wasteland, large... and then there was like that snowy map with the train on it. You remember that okay, one? Okay, that sucked. Derail was the worst. Yeah, I guess that one Come sucks, on. so that's a bad example. But Wasteland was a large map that no one used the perimeter because it was useless. So it actually turned into a medium map. Wasteland was a, a remake of a COD 2 map, which uh, yeah. was a remake of a COD 1 map. Um, yep. Uh, oh, what's the name of that? I'm forgetting it. Car- oh, it wasn't Car- No, not no, Carantan. Like it was a... Uh, uh, oh, that was uh, China. Son of a bitch. It's on the top of my mind. I can't think of it. Anyways, um, well, this has been going for like 30 minutes, so let's let's uh, let's go. I know you're a busy man. You've got lots of stuff to do, so I'm gonna let you go here. But I want to finish this out with by <laughs> by by asking you, um, what do you think has been your favorite part of this whole YouTube streaming experience? And don't say your girlfriend because that's a cheesy answer. No, that's a lame answer. Uh, I would say my favorite part is after all the years I've been streaming in YouTube. I get to meet a lot of them, the people that I hang out with you know, like every night, virtually, I get to meet them at like TwitchCon, let's say. It is by far the most fun thing I've done. I'm, and, yeah, I'm kind of with you on that one. I flew out to PAX recently just to hang out with five subscribers in my, uh, in my Twitch chat that are, that are there like every time I go live. I had a blast, man. I had plans to go to a party and then I ended up just playing monopoly with them in a hotel room for like it's, five it hours is great because it's, it's like you feel like you know them you never met them and you get to actually meet them and it, it's it's like the coolest thing ever i wouldn't have this possibility without you know twitch and youtube and all that yeah. i'd still be sitting inside <laughs> well i like that answer and um i'm happy you uh you finally decided to uh let Speak. me interview <laughs> interview you for a camp hutch slash quality time with hutch <laughs> um i will well, say i think it was much. a terrible career move that you passed up on it before but <laughs> you know, better late than never. I agree. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your time, dude. It was good. Good talking to you, and I uh, wish you the best. All right. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. 
All right, take it easy, pal.